Okay, this is the second video for section 6.1, Completing the Square. In the first video, I went through a big explanation as um, to how we came about the method for completing the square, um, why we're able to do what we do. Okay, in this video, I'm just going to kind of try and stay to just going through the steps. Okay, the last video was an explanation of the steps. This video, I just want to go through, go through an example. So if you don't understand why we're doing the steps and you want to know, Okay, go back and watch the previous video, the 6.1 completing the square um, with explanation, I think it says in the title. Okay, So let's just quickly remember, um, completing the square is a method for going from standard form of a quadratic, going from standard form to vertex form. Okay, How we do that, how we go from standard form to vertex form, is we make the standard form quadratic into a perfect square trinomial. We make it into an a squared plus a 2ab plus a b squared. We make it be a perfect square trinomial so that when we factor it, when we factor a perfect square trinomial, we get a binomial squared. We get an a plus b squared. Okay. If our perfect square trinomial is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, we get an a plus b squared when we factor it. Okay. I went through a proof of that in the last video, so go back and watch it if you want to see that. But you'll notice, okay, if we factor a perfect square trinomial, we get a binomial squared, and that is exactly what we have in vertex form. So to get a quadratic in standard form to vertex form, we have to make it be a perfect square trinomial. Okay, That way when we factor it, we get a squared binomial, which is what we want um, to have it in vertex form. Okay, I'm going to go through the example, and once again, if you want to know the reasoning behind the steps, please go back and watch the last video. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly review what we learned in the last video. Okay, we learned that the last term of a perfect square trinomial, so this b squared, is half of the middle term, so it's half of 2ab, because ab has been doubled, okay, and then squared, because our last term is b squared. So the last term of a perfect square trinomial is half of the middle term, squared, okay? So this is a perfect square trinomial, x squared plus 18x plus 81, that's a perfect square trinomial, it's an x squared um, at the beginning, a 9 squared at the end, and the middle is 2 times 9 times x, okay? This is a perfect square trinomial. Um, to get from the middle term to the last term, I know the middle term has always been doubled, okay? So if I undouble it, if I divide it by 2, I get 9, and then I know my last term has been squared, so if I square that 9, I get 81, okay? So the relationship is the last term of the perfect square trinomial is half of the middle term squared. The last term is half of this, half of the 18, which is 9 squared. 9 squared is 81. That's the relationship between these two. I went through a longer explanation that in the last video. I'm going to try not to go through the explanation too much in this video, but that's what happens because um, the rule in the middle, it's always been doubled, so we have to undouble it by dividing by 2, and then square it because the last term is always squared. Okay, and then the factored form is always x plus b over 2 squared. Okay, the factored form of this is x plus 9 squared. Okay, because our a value is x, our b value is 9, and the factored form is a plus b squared. Okay, I can get this, b, our, our a value is always going to be x. Okay, for whenever we're completing the square. To get our, to figure out what our b value is, we take the, the, b, the b term of standard form, remember this is standard form, so we take the b value and divide it by 2 because it's been doubled. Okay, so if we undouble this b value, we get 9. Okay, and that's what our, our b value is going to be. Okay, once again, I'm going to try not to dwell too much on the explanation. But, once again, if I want to make this a perfect square trinomial, all I have to do is take half of that middle term, that b term. So take half of 6 and then square it. So half of 6 is 3, 3 squared is 9. So this is now a perfect square trinomial. So what I did there is b over 2 squared. Okay, That's what I did to make it a perfect square trinomial. I added b over 2 squared. Okay, 6 over 2 squared is 9. Okay, here's the steps for completing the square. Let's go through and do an example. Okay, So to make this a perfect square trinomial, it needs to be in the form of one of these two, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, or a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, You'll notice it's not in this form, because 11 is not a perfect square number. 
If I take the square root of 11, it doesn't give me a nice whole number. Okay? So I have to make this be a perfect square trinomial. How I'm going to do that? Because I know that 11 doesn't help us, that 11 is not a number squared. Okay? It's not a whole number squared. So I want to kind of get rid of that 11 for now. How I'm going to do that, since I can't just eliminate it, I'm going to group the first two terms together and then put this 11 off by itself somewhere. Okay, Just off at the end there. I haven't eliminated it. It's still there. But I've just grouped the first two terms together Okay, and then left that positive 11 outside the brackets. Now what I'm going to do, Okay, I want to get rid of this negative 2 because I know my first term has to be an a squared. And I can't have a negative 2 in front of there because I can't take the square root of negative 2. So I want to get whatever's in front of this x squared out. Okay, So we did step 1. We put brackets around the first two terms. Okay, Brackets around the negative 2x squared and the 12x. Our next step is to factor out the common number um, in front of the x squared. Okay, Not the letter. We don't want to take out an x even though x is a common factor. We don't want to take that out. We just want to take out the negative 2. Okay, So if I take out a negative 2, I have to divide both of these terms by negative 2. Negative 2x squared divided by negative 2 is just x squared. 12x divided by negative 2 is negative 6x. Okay. Why I didn't factor out the, the x as well is because I want to make this a perfect square trinomial in here. I need this to be a perfect square trinomial. In order for it to be a perfect square trinomial, I need my first term to be something squared. If I took out an x, I would no longer have an x squared at the beginning. I would only have an x. Okay. So once again, let's just keep in mind our whole goal of this is to get whatever's here into the form y equals a x minus h plus squared plus k. Okay, I want to get this into vertex form. That's my whole goal. So I want to, I'm almost kind of there already. It does kind of look like that, except we don't have a binomial squared. We need to get this binomial into this, into a binomial squared. Okay, so we're going to do that by turning what's inside the brackets into a perfect square trinomial, okay, into one of these, so that when we factor it, it gives us a binomial squared. So how we're going to do that, we know that um, to make this a perfect square trinomial, we need to have a last term, we need to add a term at the end, we need to add a term at the end there, that is half of the middle term squared. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'll do this in a different color just so you know it's not part of the equation here and I'll kind of section it off. I need to do b over 2 squared to figure out what I have to add to this into here to make it a perfect square trinomial. Our b value is negative 6. So I do negative 6 over 2 squared, which is negative 3 squared, which is positive 9. Anything squared is positive. Okay, so I need to put this 9 into here to make it a perfect square trinomial. Okay, so I'm going to put that in there. But remember, I can't just add things to equations and claim that it's still equivalent. Okay, if I add a 9 to this, I also have to subtract a 9 to keep my equation equivalent. I can't just add things and claim it's equivalent. If I add a 9, I also have to subtract a 9 to keep it equivalent. Okay. So now this is a perfect square trinomial, except, okay, except I still have this negative 9 here at the end. Okay. What I have right here, this x squared minus 6x plus 9, that's a perfect square trinomial. But I also have this negative 9 inside the brackets that's stopping me from being able to factor it into a binomial squared. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to get that negative 9 outside the brackets. We know that when we have a number in front of the brackets, if we have a, a monomial up front and we need to multiply it by a polynomial, to get rid of these brackets, we have to use distributive property. Multiply everything by what's in front, and then that takes everything outside of the brackets, and the brackets are gone. Okay, But I don't want to take everything outside of the brackets. I just want to take the negative 9 outside of the brackets. So I have to multiply only the negative 9 by the negative 2. And then that'll bring just the negative 9 outside of the brackets. Okay. So, oh, sorry, what have we done so far? So we did this step. Um, we looked at the last term in the brackets. 
divided it by 2 and then squared it. Okay, that's what we did right here. Then we added and subtracted that term behind the last term in the brackets. We added the 9 and subtracted the 9 behind the 6x. Now we need to move the negative term outside of the bracket. Move, yeah, outside of the brackets. Okay, the negative 1 at the end. Move that outside of the brackets by multiplying it by the a value, by the negative 2. And I explained why we do that. So um, nothing's going to change except that negative 9 is going to be moved outside of the brackets by being multiplied by the a value of negative 2. So if I multiply negative 2 by negative 9, so I ju if I do just that one part of the distributive property, that takes out just the negative 9 out of the brackets. So negative 2 times negative 9 is positive 18. So outside of the brackets, this negative 9 looks like a positive 18. And I still have that plus 11. Good. Now, um, what I can do, I can simplify that 18 plus 11. into, so 18 plus 11 is 29, okay? Now what I have, we're so close to having this in vertex form. I need to change this into, um, into a binomial square. I need to factor it, okay? I know we've created a perfect square trinomial. I've created an a squared plus a 2ab plus a b squared. I have an x squared at the beginning. I have a 3 squared at the end. And in the middle, I have 2 times 3 times x, I have a 6x. In fact, in this case, we're, we're going to use this rule specifically, okay, because we have the negative. Okay, so we have an a squared minus a 2ab plus a b squared. Okay, so in order to factor this, my a value is x, my b value is 3, okay, so I know it's going to be x minus 3 squared, a minus b squared, I can also use the rule knowing my factor that we um, learned here. The factored form is x plus b over 2 squared, okay, because I know my b value has been doubled, okay, my b value has been doubled in a perfect square trinomial. So I undouble it, divide it by 2, and that gives me my b value. So all I have to do is divide the middle term by 2, and that gives me what the b right here, what the b is going to be. So I know it's going to be x plus b over 2. My b value is negative 6. x plus negative 6 over 2. Square that. That's the factored form. That's going to be my a minus b squared, once I simplify that. Okay? Plus 29. Okay? Now, I have x plus negative 3 x plus negative 3 is just x minus 3. Now this is in vertex form. This is vertex form. This is what we worked so hard to get. Okay. Vertex form is y equals, we remember, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And this is exactly what this looks like. Our vertex is hk, if we remember. So our vertex is 3. 29. Okay, so I can write that. That's the next part of the question. What is the vertex? Vertex is 3, 29. Good. Um, is the vertex a maximum or minimum point? Because the parabola opens down because our a value is negative, this is a max. So this is a max. Um, axis of symmetry is just x equals h. Our h value is 3 x equals 3. Good. So that's how we completed the square. Okay. We started with a quadratic in standard form. We forced it to be a perfect square trinomial right here. We were then able to, um, able to factor that into a binomial squared, which makes it look like vertex form. And out of that, we can take out our vertex, our h and k, and state that that's the maximum value because it opens down. Okay, that's all there is to completing the square. Hope that helps.